Hello, I'm John Kosmoski. Welcome to Valspar's House of Color videotape on the application techniques of chameleon colors. The chameleon colors are those wild colors that when you walk around a car, they change. And I'm sure you've looked at cars that have had this finish and said, this is very, very difficult to do. It's not. And during this video, we're going to show you just how easy it is. There are eight primary colors available. They use no standard automotive pigmentation. It's a very unique pigmentation, very much like a prism. As you walk around it at different angles, it appears to have a different color. They're exciting. The most exciting thing to happen in automotive refinish in decades. But it's a simple process. We use more pigmentation in our product than others, and we're extremely competitively priced. And remember, if it doesn't say chameleon, it's not house of color. So hang with us now. We're going to run through this. It's exciting. You're going to have fun. You're going to learn to do it. Well, here's our subject vehicle, Camaro. Factory finish. We're going to go right over the factory finish. The first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to take a tar wax and grease remover, and we're going to go over the vehicle a couple of times with tar wax and grease remover, discarding the rags between coats. We're going to disassemble the vehicle. In this particular model, we're going to have to remove the spoiler, and that's going to have to be painted separately. We're going to take the door handles off. We're going to pull the grill, the lights. As you can see, those are all off the vehicle now. And again, the wipe down is taking place. We're very fussy about this because if there's silicone wax on there that doesn't get thoroughly removed, it can cause fish eyes and other imperfections in our finish during the painting process. We now begin the sanding, and you can use 280, 320, some painters even use 240. Now we use the DA sanders, uh, basically we like the Hutchins uh, vacuum type sanders because they keep the dust to a minimum, the sandpaper lasts much longer. Here we are installing the paper on the pad, putting it into the perforating tool by lining up the marks, and it knocks holes in the sandpaper that allow the vacuum to pull the sanding residue during the painting process. Not only increases the life of the sandpaper, but certainly makes our job a lot easier. You'll notice no sanding dust is falling off the sanding tool. Now we're very careful to use this tool on the large areas, and we will still have to come in with hand paper and do some of the detail areas, like around the side marker lights, for example. We have to knock the shine. Our goal is to completely knock the shine off the factory finish and try very carefully not to go through because then we'd have to come in with some primer. We put poly over the brakes. We make sure that the exhaust system is taped out so that no paint gets on these areas, which can be real troublesome for the customer when he begins driving the vehicle. Now here Danny is going in and doing the very difficult detailing inside the door jams. They, of course, have to be sanded, and we're going to paint those during the process of painting the car. Here's our paint products. The customer has chosen a mix, which we have 36 different combinations available. By using the eight basic chameleons, they can be mixed together for many different shades. What's called for in this particular job by the customer's request is a 50-50 mix of blue to red to cyan to purple. So we're going to take four quarts of the material, we're going to put them in the shaker to make sure they're thoroughly mixed, and we're going to mix them together and make sure we get that thorough blending. Now here's the cyan to purple by itself. Isn't it amazing how by just turning it, it seems to completely change color? This is an extremely unique pigment system, and it's exciting because of these changes. And it's not difficult, as you'll see as we progress through the job. We're going to seal the vehicle with a dark gray co-seal, because our base color is going to be the BC25, which is a black base. We find that when the shimmerns basically using the black base, when we put the chameleon over the black shimmerin, it works great because we get maximum coverage over the black base. We find that by adding some BC26 to the BC25 and mixing a dark gray, it reduces the amount of streaks and blotching that we see in the jobs. And this is critical because it can really cause some problems. So keep that in mind and do some mixing when you're playing with these. Our products are completely shaken now and ready to do our blend in the can. We take a large mixing vial that we can add all four quarts to and we're very careful to make sure we get our dimes worth out of every can. So we will add reducer to these cans 
and make sure that all of the pigmentation is mixed in. There you can see the difference in the two combinations, the blue to red and the cyan to purple mix. There are four quarts are in the container. Now it's important to make sure we get all of the product out of there and then in each can and then go ahead and do our stir stick and very, very carefully spend time. Bench time is very important to every paint job. Many painters fail right here on the bench by not spending enough time and getting a good blend. Whether it be adding the thinner or adding the catalyst or whatever it might be, time here is extremely important. Look at the quality of that color. It's really beautiful stuff. It's fun to work with, as you'll see. Now we make sure we get every drop. Let the can settle for a little while and then tip them again to make sure we get every single drop out of there. And we're not through yet. As you'll see, we add the reducer to those cans to make sure that those cans get every bit of it out of there. All right, now we're going to mix our sealer. We've gone ahead and added a quart of sealer. Now we can use the same reducer. The RU310 works in our specialty uh, sealers. So we're going to add the full quart. It's one to one. It actually calls for 150% reduction. Now I put the, you notice that I put the reducer in the can? And the reason for doing that is to make sure that I get a thorough blending of all of that product that I paid for. All right, make sure it's well mixed. And you can spray this at one to one, actually. It works well. Okay, again, spending time on the bench, very critical. Now we're going to head and add our probe to our stick. Uh, we're going to use the plastic bags. We're going to spray with an HVLP Devilibus GTI, their new world gun. And what's nice about HVLP, and particularly this bag system, is that not only is the gun easy to clean up when you're done, notice we just got the perforation tool to go through the bag. We find the hole in the bottom of the gun, make the insertion, give it a quarter turn with pressure, Take our probe out. Now check the bag to make sure it's in. Very good, it's in. Put the gun in our stand, our holder. I do add the extra amount of reducer here. So we did go to the 150%. All right, let's strain into the gun. And this is the beginning. We've already tacked the car. Now how much do we put in the gun? Well, one other nice thing about the bag system is you don't have to worry about gun drips as readily because the paint is contained in this bag. Now, I put about three quarters of a gun cup full and then carefully get the air out of the bag, push the center of the top to make sure it's well sealed, check my pattern by turning the air cap in a vertical position so that I get a horizontal pattern, and the pattern is perfect. We've got a six inch pattern. That means our increment of overlap between coats is going to be three inches. So we move three inches each time. Now we're beginning in the door jams. All the areas are taped out uh, to what we're planning to paint. Go ahead and adding the black base. We're just gonna use one coat of this dark gray sealer. That's all that's required. And you can be fairly casual on the sealer application. In fact, most of it is fairly easy, as you'll see as we progress. I had to kind of angle the gun a little bit there in order to avoid colliding with the uh, cup on the deck lid. But the paint will not turn the corner, and so the sealer will not turn the corner as well. So we have to use care to make sure that we're getting on nice, even coverage, and underneath as well, and around the license. Make sure you get the gun into those areas. The paint won't turn the corner. We as painters have to turn those corners. So pay attention. It's not rocket science. As we talked about the tack rag, it's good to open the tack rag up so that it doesn't transfer residue during the tacking operation. Now after the sealer has been on for 15 or 20 minutes, we go in and tack the sealer. The reason is you get overspray that travels around the vehicle during the application of, of the sealers, and it can be done between coats on bases as well. See, look at what we've picked up here with this brand new tack rag. So it is important to get that dust off of there so that we get begin with no roughness on the surface. Now we're mixing our black base. And it's 
two quarts of black base to one quart of reducer, two to one mix on the shimmering bases. It appears I'm using chameleon, but I'm just using one of the cans as a measuring device. I measure everything. I do not believe in guess methods or glug methods. I think it's very important to measure everything and spend quality time on that bench. I also time myself between coats, which I think is very important because if you go in and put a wet coat on a wet coat, you're going to trap solvents. And that can hurt you eventually if you're painting too fast. Now again, straining into the gun cup with the black base. And we talked about mixing some BC26 into the black to gray it a little bit. On large objects, I like to do that. But what we've found with the chameleon colors is they cover the extremely the fast over the black base. So using the black base is generally considered a must. But when you get into large areas, by graying the black, you definitely improve your application techniques because there's much less chance of showing blotching or streaking, etc. And these are critical items with the uh, chameleon colors if they're not applied wet. So we try to put those coats on as wet as possible. Now how many coats of black base do we need? All we need is full coverage. And you can get that in one coat many times, but we put two on just for good measure to make sure that we've got thorough coverage. Once the black base is applied, the weight before the chameleon colors is just about the time it takes to mix it. So there isn't a great weight. But make sure you're getting underneath. You know the great thing about this bag system in the gun is it allows us to paint upside down with that gun. You're not going to find that you're able to do that with other equipment. Other than a pressure pot, of course. And we generally don't recommend a pressure pot when you're working with this material because it does change the characteristics of the paint. There is something to be said about the HVLP guns because of the fine atomization. Look at that ability to paint upside down. Certainly a nice factor when you're doing the difficult to spray areas. The coverage is instantaneous with the black base. Now, going around the gas area, we use a cardboard masker to just make sure we don't get excessive overspray on the outside. Uh, this is a good idea and then make sure you get the black around the edge where that goes and we'll proceed with this as we go through the chameleon stages as well All right, we're going through our walk now and this is critical. Just take it nice and easy. Don't get upset Remember that these these panels change a little bit the quarter panel is a little wider than the front fender And so keep that in consideration when you're doing it Now we're going to head, we've taken our, our kettle here, which we've already pre-mixed the two chameleon colors. Now it's time to reduce them. But before we do that, we're carefully going to pour a quart full. We're going to put two quarts in the mixing container. And then we're going to follow up with a quart of the reducer. We're going to spend some time stirring, obviously, to make sure that things are well mixed. And the other thing about putting reducer in this can, make sure that we get every drop of our chameleon. We're going to replace the bag in the spray gun with a clean, fresh bag. We're going to blow thinner through the gun to make sure there's no left residue from the former black base. And we're going to strain into the gun cup. Now these are not catalyzed. A TC-23 is adequate for spraying this product. Not so with a catalyzed product unless you're in an extremely well ventilated booth. And our booth is extremely well ventilated. We pull with full uh, vent opening 100 lineal feet of air per minute. So we really move a lot of air through the booth. And air movement going by the vehicle is what dries the paint. So if you're painting in an open room, you must use the fastest reducer that you're comfortable with based on your shop condition. Again, checking our pattern. It's a good idea to check your pattern each time to make sure that there's nothing that's happened to that air cap clogging it. Now here's our first coat of chameleon and we want that to go on wet over the black base using a tight pattern overlap. In other words, with a six inch pattern, using a 75% pattern overlap, our increment would be two inches. You'll notice I move the gun about two inches each pass. And that's critical because if you take a larger step, 
you can streak the job. And as we said earlier, it's certainly a lot easier to streak the job over a full black base than it would be over a mixed gray base. So keep that in mind when you're doing your base. Base it on the size of the object. On motorcycles, I would almost always use a black base. Why? Because you get immediate coverage over the black base. In fact, two coats get you coverage uh, almost to the maximum. We put the third one on just for drill, really, to make sure we've got the good coverage. Notice how nice and wet these coats are going on. I'm holding the gun close. I'm using a tight pattern overlap. I'm making sure that I get the edges, the corners, using that tight pattern overlap. Spend time in the license area. Get underneath. You can turn the gun upside down with that bag system. It makes it really nice for getting those underneath areas. Again, wet it. Make sure that that first coat goes on wet. If you blotch the first coat, it'll carry through the job. So it's one of the most critical coats. Again, the more gray the system is, the easier it is. Now here's the walk. Paying close attention, tight pattern overlap, take your time, watch your air hose. You don't want to step on your air hose, which shuts off the air supply, and it can literally spit some paint on the side of the vehicle. So make sure that hose control is very much in your vocabulary, especially when you're going for the walk. And keep the gun parallel, the air cap parallel. As you go down to the lower parts of the car, you'll see me either over grip the gun or make very positive that I'm maintaining that parallel. And you'll never see me point the gun the way I reach. I maintain the parallel not only top to bottom, but side to side. This is critical during the application. But it's not rocket science. You can see that I'm a human being. And I do move up and down a little bit as I'm walking. We're not talking critical, super critical here, but just have it in your mind that you're gonna be a robot. You're gonna hold this gun properly during the painting process. You're gonna pay attention to those proper overlaps, which are so critical to doing the quality kind of work that we wanna do. We're working with the best products. We have to move up and be the best painter that we can be. And it just requires concentration. Pay attention to what you're doing. Notice how slow I'm moving, just letting those coats go on. And I'm trying to understand that I'm using a straight line thinking attitude. I'm drawing invisible straight lines through the parts that I'm painting. Maintaining that parallel. When I get to the middle of the wheelhouse, I stop and do between the two wheel over. Notice me turn that gun down now to maintain that parallel. This is critical, is if I tip that gun up one end or the other, I can put streaks in the job. And we certainly do not want that to happen on a very nice paint job like this, using this type of materials. We want to minimize our mistakes. Turn the gun upside down. The rockers where a lot of painters make mistakes. They don't get down there and make sure that they've got coverage. It's certainly not a bad idea to bring a creeper in the booth with you and lay down there with a flashlight between coats and make sure that you've gotten good coverage, that you're getting down there. I hear the painters call me all the time and they take the car outside and they realize now that they didn't get the coverage they wanted underneath and they're calling and asking how they do the touch-ups. We've gone ahead and applied our three coats of chameleon. Now it's time to mix our clear. We've got two quarts of clear in the mixing vial we're going ahead and adding our catalyst. Make sure that when you're done pouring the catalyst that you wipe the threads carefully and put the lid back on immediately so that the next time you need that catalyst, it'll be there for you. House of Color makes some of the finest clears in the market, and we're VOC compliant in every marketplace, including one of the most difficult, California. In fact, we have one of the finest clears in the marketplace in California at this time. So don't make the mistake of using the clear you have on the shelf. Stick with our brand. A nice medium wet coat for the first coat. Now don't be afraid to make gun adjustments and choke the gun down a little bit. I rarely, if ever, narrow the spray pattern by using the, the fan control. I am almost always use the material control knob to narrow my pattern. There are a couple of guns out there that it will not narrow, 
So make sure you understand your equipment. This first coat is critical. If you overwet the first coat, they can run because it's many times called the bond coat because it creates a bond for all other coats. And by putting the first coat on too wet can be very critical. We go ahead and put on our three coats of clear and the next day is here. And now it's time to color sand from our sealer coats, our black base coats, our three coats of chameleon, and our three coats of clear we're now going to eliminate any lint or dirt or orange peel that may have occurred during that painting process. And we're using the 600 grit wet or dry paper here. We've cut it in half. We've gone ahead and done the three fold. And our goal now is to completely knock the shine on this vehicle. And that's all the sanding we want to do. Be careful of edges. Never cross an opening. Standard custom painting techniques. If you see a nib, like this one, we come in and take care of it. Notice the grease mark from my finger. That should tell you something. Your hands are continually producing an oil. And so always keep a rag between you and the finish on the opposite hand that you're sanding with. You don't want to transfer those body oils. If you do see them, you can usually sand them out of there. But we're looking for that nice, dry, all the shine gone on the edges. A very, very light touch is used. Notice how lightly I'm feathering this. It's, it's usually better to do nothing on the edges than to bust through and create a touch-up situation. Now we've gone ahead and over-reduced some clear, and we're going to go ahead and put the final clear coats on. We're going to do another three coats, the first one being the medium wet. We want to wet it, but we just want to put it on medium wet. And then we come back with a fuller trigger pull, or more of a trigger pull, and wet it out. To me, this is the most fun part of the painting process, because you really get to see where all your work has gone. We put on a good three coats, because this is going to be the clear coat that we're going to be buffing. And with the other three coats that we've got on there previously, this is going to be the number of coats that we're going to have for the life of the paint job. And which, by the way, should exceed 10 years, and with care even longer. Now, immediately after completing the exterior clear, we open the door jams, apply our bond coat, put on a nice wet final coat. That's the last coat of clear on those jams. Let's talk about our polish. I really like the new Meguiar's products. Their diamond cut compound brings the shine back fast. Their dual action and swirl free polish eliminate the fine scratches. Their patented paper and their foam pads Get to your nearest Meguiar's jobber and pick up the latest tech sheets on these excellent products. This is some of the color sanding equipment that's available. If you're not being paid to color sand and buff the whole car, you can just take the nibs out with this Dynabride sander. It actually just eliminates the nibs. Now we're using the vacuum sanding apparatus and we're using 1500 grit and we're using that to sand the large flat areas. What's nice about using this system is it actually does in effect block the system as well as sanding it at the same time. We wipe the dust off and here we are using the 7000 pad from Meguiar's and using their diamond cut compound and a 1500 RPM polisher and I think you'll see just how quickly the shine comes back. One application of that and one application of their dual cleaner and swirl remover combination takes the finest little scratches out, eliminates our our buffer swirls that we get using the other compound, the other compound, and then we finish up with a glazing compound using their 9000 pad. And can you see the shine? It's back. All the little nibs that we got during the painting process are gone. We're going to go ahead and assemble the car now. Put the door handles back on, the mirrors back on. Here's our completed paint job. Looks good, doesn't it? It was easy. It was fun. Thoroughly enjoy myself doing this kind of work. You never get tired of doing high quality and doing stuff that, like this. This job is so amazing. People that come in the shop and walk around it are blown away by the fact that it changes so many colors. We see about six different color changes as we walk around the car. Well, we've completed the paint job on the automobile. 
Now let's talk about some of the other exciting effects we can get using the chameleon colors. I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine, Craig Frazier. Craig, how are you doing today? Good, John. Craig is internationally known for his airbrush techniques and probably one of the top teachers in his field. He's going to show you just how easy it is to use these chameleon colors for art. Take it away, Craig. Thanks, John. As you can see, I've already laid the flames out on this tank using uh, blue fine line tape and three quarter inch masking tape. This is the same layout I would use if I was just spraying this tank any other color. What we're going to do with the chameleons, though, is we're going to take and fade around the edges of these flames to punch out the flames but give a ghosting effect. We're also going to fill up the main body of the flames with a pattern created with a series of skulls from the Skull Master stencil. I'm also going to show you how, with a little bit of added reduction, the chameleon paints can be shot through an airbrush just as simply as shot through an automotive spray gun. So let me load up my airbrush and we'll get to the next step. I've got the chameleon properly reduced and in the airbrush now. While normally the chameleon is reduced 50%, a 2 to 1 ratio to uh, the reducer, I add a little bit more. So it'd be a little bit more like a, uh, not twice as much, but in between that, just to get a little bit finer. Some airbrushes can handle a little bit thicker paint. It's really your call on this one. The color we're using is the same color we used on the Camaro. It's the 50% the cyan to purple and the 50% of the blue to red chameleon together. Make sure uh, when you have the airbrush every now and then you have to shake it up a little bit because the paint quite often uh, does settle over a period of time. Now the first thing we're doing on here with the airbrush is we're going to come in and just slightly outline these flames. Just real lightly. It's always better to go over in small layers with the chameleon or with anything when you're airbrushing than all at once really heavily. You can always duplicate layers build up more and more light layers, but if you go too heavy, it's hard to take it back. This chameleon is being sprayed over the same BC25 black house of color paint that was used on the Camaro. And as you can see, the chameleon is just starting to shine on the tips. I don't want to get it too heavy because I'm using this almost like I would a transparent candy where I'm going to build up the layers around this design. I'm going to take care of the top of the design a little bit later because it's kind of out of my field of vision right now. While the tips, the tips are looking pretty good, I don't want to get them too dark. I want to come in now with the pattern. And the pattern we're going to use is going to be these little skulls. There's a number of different ones to choose from. I'm going to choose this medium-sized one with the, with the crossbones in it. And this is a urethane-proof uh, shield made by Art Tool. They're called the Skull Master Series. And all you do is it's a flexible acetate. You can lay over the design. And I'm not going to be real accurate as to where I'm placing the first one, but it's important to keep the continuity later on. I'm going to fog this skull in here. You may not see much until you pull away and you can see the ghost image. At certain angles it'll appear different colors. Now that I've got one in there, it's important now that I start creating a pattern. I don't want this to look random going everywhere. So these are semi-transparent, the shield is, so I can see through it slightly. And I'm going to have these go straight around, evenly space them. This isn't brain surgery, so you don't need to get out the ruler to make sure the skulls are all lined up properly. But it's always nice to have them close. Eyeballing use a good enough, good enough measurement technique. I've got these all evenly spaced here. Now I'm going to create a secondary row. This is easier because as I'm looking through here, I can see the two little bones from the bottom of those two skulls, and I can center the skull out that way. Continue spraying the chameleon in here. Come around over to this side. I only have one bone to look at there, but I can still lay, line it up. And I'm going to take it all the way in to the flame over here. You're not going to notice it as much as I get to the end because we've already fogged the tips of these flames with the color. This color will reach what I like to call a ceiling color. What a, a ceiling color or, or like a final color. You get it so dominant it can't get any darker. I, I want to make sure I don't get all of this area too dark otherwise you'll never see these skulls later on. The cool thing about the chameleons, much like the candies, is they're so transparent my shield, I'm always going to be able to see through the shield semi-decently. And being urethane proof, I can always soak this in, in solvent and clean it up real good if it starts getting too covered up in paint. You want to make sure if you're doing a large area with these stencils or any stencil, you have a couple of stencils to use. Because if they get too wet, you have to stop and clean them. Otherwise, you can have some paint transferring underneath them you don't want. And that can kind of mess up your time schedule if you're trying to get something done fairly fast. I'll put another row up here on top now. Notice how it's not wrapping perfectly, but you really can't tell. I'm spraying so lightly. It still, it, you know, it still looks sharp even though the, the thing's not t 
totally tied against it. There are tricks with stencils on curved surfaces you can use. You can come in with a uh, 3M Super 77 or some different type of spray adhesives on the back, and it makes the back very, very sticky, which will make it stick down to the surface. The only downside to that, you've got to be real careful that adhesive is removed later on. Otherwise, it can be a pretty nasty contaminant with your, with your clear coat. You can see the general idea what I'm doing here. In this area, I want to show a little bit of a skull. I'll figure out there will be one here. I'm not going to spray that. That'd be redundant. It's over tape. I'll move this one here, though, because you would see this one. A little bit of that in there. Maybe move another one over into that area of the flame. You can just barely see it. At this point, you can come in and continue darkening up the edges of your flames with this. This, at this step right here, I may just want to peel the tape all off and leave it, and it'll look real, real subtle. If I want it to real, be real dominant and a real sharp, crisp edge, I'm definitely going to want to make sure I have enough of this chameleon sprayed around the edge. Now you're seeing this is only a little three-quarter ounce cup, and I've, I literally will have enough chameleon to do this entire tank. I don't know if you can see from your standpoint. I've got more than half of the, the paint left in here, and I've already done this much. This is a great aspect about chameleon. Since everyone knows how, how pricey they are, it's like liquid gold as far as painters go, this is a great effect that uses very little chameleon, which is very cost effective for airbrush artists. I saw a little area down here I missed, so just grab my stencil and zap it real quick. And I'm also going to continue around the front. It's easy to forget about the front because we're focusing on fading the tails, but if I ignore the front, I won't have any discernment between my black and my chameleon. I don't want chameleon all in this area because I want the, the skull pattern I've created to really stand out. But I want a gradated fade of the chameleon to come up into it. So subtly you see a little bit of chameleon in the area, but not as much as on the rest. Like on the Camaro, that's like way dominant right there. This is a ghosting effect. And the nice thing about the airbrush, it's one of the few ways, as far as I know, it's almost the only way to get these very, very subtle gradated effects using the chameleon. Many people don't realize how transparent the chameleon really is. I could have an entire mural on here, and by slightly fading the chameleon over it, it'll give it a complete chameleon effect to the mural, but not affect any of the detail on my mural. Now I want to get into these one areas and darken this up a bit because the one part I want to really push on these flames that will be accented the most are going to be these licks, the actual flame area of this design. Now this, this area right around here is pretty much done. Uh, I may want to come in a little bit and fog around the edge and of course when the whole design's you know clear coated it'll be finished. But I need to come up here on the top and finish this design up here. Nice thing about Working with Harley tanks, they're a little bit smaller. You can work around them a little bit easier than running around a car. I can also move them. This right here is easy for me just to stand on. All I'm doing now is going around the outside edge. Even though you may think this paint acts like a, like a pearled paint, it has some similarities, but it, it tends to be much finer. Instead of the actual mica pearls, it's more of, a, more of a holographic film. It's very, very finely ground. And because of that, it's very, very kind to the airbrusher. Airbrushes, on general, do not like very, very thick pigments or pearls. They have a tendency of clogging. This gun I'm using here is a little bit, a little bit more of a larger aperture. It's actually it's a, an Eclipse model from Iwata that can handle the pearls. In general, you don't want a lot of pearls when you're airbrushing. You can use them, but they do clog. I'm just cleaning up these edges. Remember, I want the dominant amount of the chameleon, like the Camaro over here, to be just on the outside edge. But I want a lot of that BC-25 to show through. One thing you're going to notice, uh, you couldn't lay these out evenly anyway if you wanted to plan it out. Because as you're going around a surface, if you're trying to create a pattern on a three-dimensional surface that's, 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 that's round, almost like a, a sphere, you end up with distortion. So this is almost a radial pattern. The skulls are starting to curve this way. Now, don't fight it. Go with it, and it'll look good. If you fight the design and try and actually make them all linear, you're going to end up crowding them. It's going to look very, very busy. Around these flames, I can kind of fudge it. I want to be exact. But I want to continue them all the way over, even if it's not a full skull. It's a little bit of a skull. Still, it helps push the image out over there. And just come along the outside edge again. 
Now as soon as this paint's dry, which is pretty, pretty fast, with the airbrush, this is nearly, the, right here is dry, I wouldn't be playing with the tips for at least a minute or so. We're gonna give it a little bit of time to dry. You're gonna yank off all the tape. They're gonna hang it in the booth and clear coat it. And this piece is done. We'll come back a little bit later and you can see how the ghost effect looks unmasked and cleared. And let's go on to the next step. What we've done on this demo is I've laid out a scarab design, it's the House of Color logo, and cut it out of frisket. What frisket basically is is a masking film that you can see through. It's, it's uh, very transparent. At the same time, it has good adhesive properties and it cuts very nicely with an X-Acto knife. On this demo, we're not going to use just the chameleon. We're going to try using a combination of the chameleon with another house color product called Marbleizer. What I'm going to use is the Marbleizer MB01, which is a silver white marbleizer. And we're going to create a marbled effect that we're then going to fade over with chameleon. Let me show you what we're going to do. I've got the saran wrap here. Most marbleizer is just applied and then the saran wrap is applied after it to manipulate it and give it that marbled texture. I'm going to show you a little, little trick here. We're going to lay this saran wrap right over the scarab design here. And I've already got my airbrush loaded up. You notice I've switched over. I've got a bottle feed now. It tends to work a little bit better. This has a very heavy pearl in it by comparison to the chameleon, the marbleizer does. So you want an airbrush that can handle a little bit more uh, paint by volume. This Eclipse bottle feed is one of them. And I'm going to come in and spray fairly wet the marbleizer. You can see it's very, very bright silver. Spray it over that one area. Letting it set up a little bit on the plastic, I'm going to pull the plastic away. Of course, none of it ended up on the surface because I had the plastic protecting it, but it gave me a good example of how much I needed to apply to that one area because I could see the design through the saran wrap. But I'm going to lay it on, kind of manipulate a little bit here. I mean by manipulate, you kind of scrunch it around. You can use freezer wrap. You can use almost anything. I've even used my hands to create bizarre little effects. And when you pull away, get a little bit more up there in the corner, I missed some area. When you pull away with the, the saran wrap, you can see the marble texture in there. Now if that marble texture is a little bit more than you want, you can double the saran wrap back over, lay it back over one more time, pull it away. What it does, it'll pull away a little bit more of that marbleizer. I don't want the thing to be pure marbleizer, I want a little bit of black to show through. So I pulled away enough there. We got a nice marble texture. It actually looks like a, like a stone effect. Now, marble edge is not too friendly when it's coming to other products when it's wet. You want to let it dry. Um, it's getting fairly dry right now. It dries pretty quickly. It does take a little bit longer than most paints because it's designed to stay wet so you can manipulate it with the plastic. I'm going to switch over my airbrushes now. For those of you that are curious, uh, quick connect hoses are always handy when you're dealing with multiple guns in one spray source. What I've got in the airbrush now is the same chameleon that we used before. It's that combination of the cyan, purple, and then the blue-red. Same as the Camaro. And it's the same reduction we had in here. Matter of fact, it's the exact same airbrush I used. I'm going to use a gradated fade. What I mean by that is I'm going to start out dark on the, on the bottom area and then fade light up to, towards the top. And it's going to give it a real heavy chameleon effect down here, but very lightly up on top. The silver on this, by comparison to the black, is going to mute the chameleon a little bit, but it'll give it a real neat effect. The best part of this effect, personally, is they don't make a chameleon marbleizer yet. But by fogging, marble, by fogging the chameleon over this existing marble design, it looks just like chameleon marbleizer. I've done this a number of times and had people just call me up and, hey, where'd you get that chameleon marbleizer? Because they know it's not available. And again, we're using very little. I won't even use a quarter of an ounce to do this design right here. So it's a very cost-effective way of using the chameleon for a very nice effect. I am going to fog it even all the way up here. I don't want it to be just pure silver marbleizer. It's going to get a little chameleon up there. But down at the bottom, I want it to be really dark. So you see me kind of, I'm going back and forth, but I'm also doing these little mini circles. I don't want there to be a back and forth line or pattern. And I don't like crisscrossing and crosshatching when I'm spraying. Airbrushes have a tendency of being very, uh, they, they create a lot of splotchiness because of the way they spray if you actually try and go back and forth like a normal spray gun. These don't have a fan tip like spray guns do. They actually spray in a cone. Getting a real heavy, I want it to be real heavy at the bottom to show the, the, the drastic effect. At some angles, you won't even see the chameleon at all. It'll just appear completely black, except for the marbleizer you'll see. And at other angles, you go through the full color spectrum, much like you see on the Camaro. 
We let that dry a bit, and then what we're going to do is we're going to yank off the frisket. Again, wipe it down, being very careful not to damage any of our painted surface, but also to get the adhesive up on the frisket. Then we're going to take it to the back booth and put a clear coat on it. We're going to come back later so you can see the tank and this panel fully clear coated and finished. And you can see the effect that just a subtle use of chameleon can be used in an airbrush and how easy it is to create that effect. Here we got the tank back from the booth. It's all been clear coated now. And as you can see, as I rotate the tank around, you see the nice color shift this chameleon's given us, especially on the curved surface of the tank itself. Some of the nice aspects of the chameleon, especially when used very sparingly over this BC25 black. Now, this design could either be left this way, clear coated and buffed out, or you could continue finishing it off by pinstriping. It's really a, a personal call on that on, on taste. But this is a perfect example on how a minimal amount of chameleon can give you a pretty incredible effect in a very short amount of time on a, on a fairly simple design such as this flame. Let's go on and check out that metal panel that we had the scarab design and the marbleizer on. After getting the flat panel back from the booth, we can see how nicely the scarab design came out after being clear coated. Now this is the exact same chameleon that was sprayed on the Camaro as well as the flame tank. The difference being the chameleon was sprayed over the marbleizer, unlike the BC25 black for the rest of the other two projects. This gave it a much higher instance of refraction, much brighter image. Almost looks as if the chameleon was sprayed right over tinfoil. Now both these designs, the scarab as well as the flame tank, could easily be recleared and buffed out and finished. Or you could come in, add a little extra pinstriping, pretty much that's up to you. These two demos are perfect examples on the high quality of design and the real heavy impact image you can get from these chameleons. How easy they are to use and what an outstanding job you can get in such a small amount of time. Wasn't that exciting? Using standard custom painting techniques, what are the other uses for chameleon colors? Motorcycles are an excellent place for their use. This one was completely done in chameleon, including the engine. The timing covers, everything have been painted and they will hold up to the heat. We've also done airbrushing in different colors on the side on this snake design. We use it on the pin striping. We used it on the stripes on this 34 Ford. What's unique about that is as you walk around the vehicle, the stripes change. It can be used on flame layouts. You only need one color. As you walk by the vehicle, the motorcycle, or the car, or whatever, the hot rod, whatever it might be, those flames change colors. And you didn't do it by doing a radical blend, you did it by putting one color down. So yeah, it really makes sense to use the chameleons in other areas. Now how about systems? Well, I was at a car show where a man had used our chameleon color and foolishly clear coated it with another company's clear. It was delaminating during the show. It's not worth it. Stick with a system. One of the things House of Color is known for is the high quality of our products. We don't cheat. We use the best ingredients, and they're made to work together. They merge and lay together as a unit that lasts for years and years and years. So stick within that system. Use the good two-part primers within our system. Uh, follow the recommendations in our tech sheets, and you can get results like this so easy. Now, you've seen how easy it is. You don't have to share that with your friends. They're going to think you're a magician turning out work like this. But now you know just how easy it is to do. So thanks a lot for hanging with us. Appreciate it having you.